Hey there, Mission Control. Welcome to the Martian jungle. So if you've uh, been following us, you know that we're at our potato bed right now because you can't be the real Martian unless you actually grow potatoes. Uh, that's, just, that's just a rule, it's a law. Uh, so uh, we got our Yukon Golds, they're growing and they're doing pretty well, lots of green. That doesn't mean we're gonna get potatoes off them, of course, but uh, the red potatoes that we put in here, they did not do so well. And uh, my current theory on that is because I didn't let them, um, I, I cut them too small and I didn't let them uh, dry out enough. So uh, I have some new ones here and they're actually already sprouting. So we're gonna put these in here today. I see, there's, man, there's a lot of water down there. Whoa, there's a whole lot of water down there. Because, aha, that explains so much. I've been wondering. You guys can't see this. You're just seeing my butt. Okay. Bye, golly. This thing right here was still in there. I was wondering why it's so wet. I only have this bed running for 10 minutes. And it was, ah, oh, it's, oh my goodness. You guys don't understand. This is one really a stupid mistake because I'm an idiot and I left this on there. Dumb. Uh, should have double checked everything. In fact, after this, I'm gonna go double check all the valves or all the beds because this is hugely stupid. That means there's a bunch of water left in here and that explains why the previous ones got all yucky and mucky and gross. They shouldn't have done that at all, but they did. And now we know why. Okay, back to the track here. So now we're gonna be putting in the noob spuds. And down there. Now you might be thinking about the old spuds that were in here. And the good news is that with the old spuds, put a little marker right there. The old spuds that are in here, we have a bunch of red worms in here. So uh, they're gonna go in and have a little bit of fun eating all the leftovers. And that's an experiment in itself, just seeing how well the red worms work. So it shall be interesting to see. Go. Those worms should be in there just eating up all this stuff that's uh, yucky. Yucky is a highly technical, very scientific term. Uh, oh, yep, there they are. Okay. Yeah. Here you guys go. There's the red worm. Whoa! Come here, you're important. Okay, there we go. So we got those all over the bed and they're there to help clean up all the solid waste. So this is one of the things I saw when I first started researching aquaponics is uh, the use of red wigglers to help deal with uh, solid fish waste. So you can use your media bed as a filter if you have the red wigglers in it. At least that's how the theory goes. So, we're checking that out. Oh, I'm so happy I found that pipe. That explains so much. There we go. Oh, and it just almost guarantees that these, this is gonna work now. And we've got the red wigglers in it. it means the system's very happy. Oh. oh. Happy day. That explains so much. Oh yeah, man, there's worms. So cool. Right, just as long as they don't eat the good stuff, right? That's gonna be our new challenge, is make sure they don't eat the good ones. We'll see though, it's all an experiment.
Yeah, I mean, they basically chewed up everything. Oh, so cool. There's the old ones left over. Oh, that just explains so much. I can't believe I left that in there. Okay, there we go. Other side. I'm gonna pull up one of these ones that was growing, see what's happening underneath here. Not really much. So we got a plant, but not really anything growing on it. So that's a potentially very bad sign. Now we got lots of worms though. Oh, that's great. That is really great. Let's, let's see if this will grow. Let's just put it down there, huh? Let's see what happens. I mean, that's what we're here to do is experiment. Put this one down in there as well. All right, I just got the potatoes planted, and of course we discovered that problem with the uh, water. So I'm, I'm really quite hopeful that, uh, well, I'm hopeful that we, got it cor we can correct this thing. Uh, with the water being as high as what it was, the potatoes are getting way too much water. So I'm really, I, I'm guessing we probably, they rotted out. Uh, but we got good, uh, good growth over here to your left uh, with the Yukons. Uh, so we'll get these reds in here and we're going to see what happens with them. And I'm going to set the water level. This, this bed only runs for 10 minutes, which means the water gets up to about here and the seeds are about here. So the roots should come down. We'll see how well that actually happens. Uh, but man, so lucky I found that tube. I need to go check all of them now, make sure that tube's out. Otherwise we'll have major problems. Uh, but let's go to our next bed. We got some more planting to do. We got more corn, so let's get the, ooh, I need my little thing though. Oh my goodness. Okay, more appropriate tool for the job here. All right, I think these go down here, right? Like that. And that come, ooh, ooh, don't do anything bad. Okay. There we go. Next. Come on out. Ooh, look at that. Good root. So Mrs. Marsh and I were talking, uh, I think it was yesterday actually, and we were discussing, no, it was two days ago. We were discussing how the world views different things and different jobs in different ways. So, for example, if you look at a teacher versus a football player, professional football player, and we assign value to these people based on their paychecks, right? Because the more money you make, the more valuable society believes you to be. That's why you get paid more. That's why people who know how to write software get paid a tremendous amount of money to do what they're doing is because society values the software that they produce, therefore they get compensated for their value, proportional to their value. Now you look at teachers and football players. So, football player, for a few months out of the year, 
plays a hugely uh, physical game, very demanding, but no real meaning. And I love football, by the way. Football is an amazing sport. It teaches young boys uh, very important lessons of life. Um, and I, I totally enjoy watching it. But now, we look at how much the NFL players get made, or get paid, how much money they make, and realize that, you know, they get a lot of money just for entertaining us. And you, you gotta ask yourself, like, does that make sense that the NFL players get paid so much money to entertain us, yet the, the teachers that teach all of us how to read, how to write, how to do math, how to, how to even be capable of being a football player, we pay them hardly anything. Now here in the States, we've had lots of unions walk out lately because teachers aren't getting paid anything. And I'm, I'm guilty of supporting that. When the levies come up and everything, you know, how to, I'm pretty selfish, I admit it. But uh, Mrs. Marsh and I were having this conversation bluntly, you know, and if you stop and you really think about what we value, it, it really makes you question some of the things that you do. Now, all of you out there are probably way better than I am, uh, so you probably pay teachers the correct amount of money and uh, help them out. Uh, but I don't, so maybe this is just talking about me, but the way society seems to be going, it doesn't look like we really value teachers at all. Even though I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing had it not been for a series of teachers over the course of decades worth of school. So it really makes you question how, what we value, why we value it. Anyway, it's just an interesting conversation because when you look at food and farmers, how come farmers aren't getting paid what engineers get paid, right? Engineers can fail. If they fail, there's no real harm done, right? If a farmer fails, we don't eat. Now, last time I checked, we all depend on food. So why is it that we don't value farming and food production more than what we currently do? It just doesn't make sense to me. And it was an eye-opening experience because as Alicia and I embark on this journey, we're learning about how difficult it really is to grow food. Like, it's a Goldilocks problem. It, everything has to be just right in order for food to grow. You have to have just the right amount and type of light. You have to have just the right amount of heat. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, the plants will not grow, you will not get food. If you don't have enough airflow, then the plants will get mold and fungus. If you don't use the right type of bacteria in the system, you'll get disease. There are so many things that have to go right when planting food that if you don't have the skill sets, you just don't eat, man. I mean, that's it, bottom line, you just don't eat. So you look at farmers now and you realize all the skills that they have and all the knowledge that they've acquired, yet look at how little we pay them. A lot of farmers have to take out loans every year just to pay for their seeds. They depend on the, the weather being perfect so that their crops come in. It's really, it, it's, I, I've, I've come to really appreciate farmers so much because of all that they do. And you know, they don't have a facility like this yet. Uh, some of them do. And you know, they are dependent on the weather, everything. It's just, it's amazing. And, and we don't value them enough. That's the bottom line. We don't value them enough. We should, but we don't. So there's my little spiel. It's an interesting conversation. Ooh, look at that root, huh? Let's 
Get on in there, buddy. Go find your new home. Enjoy your new home. Looking good, looking good. Here's the last one. Okay, there we go. Last one's in. We've got two full beds of corn. It looks like it's doing really well. So we got our potatoes in, we got the corn in. Everything seems to be growing. We have some stuff that we're uh, dialing in with automation and the likes and getting the watering all right. But in general, and this thing's actually starting to work. So I'm really excited to see how it all turns out. Uh, I think that's about it today for my chores out here and things I'm going to get done. I still got to go clean the stalls, so I'm going to go up and get that done and then go hang out with Mrs. Martian. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is Real Martian. Out.